Welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight. I am your host, Stephanie Scheller. I bring together really smart, really cool business owners. And the way I do that is by telling everybody I know I want to talk to the smartest business owner you know. And so then we get them to come on and share the lessons they've learned. Because one thing I've learned, and I've always been a believer in this, is that there is always a lesson to learn from everyone you meet. I don't care if they're sitting on the side of the road begging. You've got something you can learn from that person. And the trick is to look for it. But my goal was to find the people who have a lot to teach us and bring them on. And that's why I've got David here. So David, thank you for joining us today. Ah, thank you for having me. I uh, appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got started, since obviously our listeners have no idea at this point. All right. So long story short, um, essentially, my wife and I, we run a branding firm that allows for creative ideas and visions to be brought to life through visual communication, design thinking, and brand strategy. Um, and so we've been running that together since about, I want to say, 2009. Um, and then more so switched full time to really running things about three, four years ago, I would say. So it's been definitely a very fun, interesting journey. Um, it was kind of a collision of passion, I guess you could say. Um, I was exposed to entrepreneurship very young. Uh, I fell in love with design and creativity around middle school. Um, high school afforded a lot of opportunity with MySpace and that whole culture. And then from there, it was, uh, I don't know, just kind of one thing led to another where I started working for startups, worked for little mom and pop places, anywhere I could really fit design in. Um, and then from there, graduated on to advertising agencies, more experiential brand design agencies. Um, and then after a while, I realized that I kind of enjoyed working on my own things, things that were not just like a project for a great brand name, but things that propelled or empowered communities and individual creatives. Nice. And so that's kind of where we uh, are now. So we help with local meetup groups, one for a local WordPress community, one on branding and user experience, um, and then anywhere else that we kind of get called if we need to speak or something of that nature. Well, yeah, so it's, it's like, it's, it's a conglomeration, but at the same time, it's, it seems like it's still, high, it's focused, like you guys stick to your strengths, your wheelhouses. He's nodding yeah. over there. You yeah. can't see that on the exactly. Zoom. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I had a question in my head and it totally jumped out listening to you. So um, I loved your, your whole bit about a collision of passions and you mentioned your wife does this with you as well. So how did you, did you rope her into that or? Um, like, so, um, I like to kind of frame it as this was our engagement ring, I guess you could say. <laughs> oh. Um, and so we were just kind of like looking at it and I was like, all right, well, you know, at the time we weren't really all about like jewelry or whatever. And there were like two little kids, both homeschool discovered that we enjoy designing and whatnot. I think we dated for like a solid four years before we like got married. And it's been, we both kind of had an idea that we wanted to run a business, right? Um, we weren't sure what it was. We just knew that entrepreneurship was going to be our thing. And after a while, um, we found that we both liked the design. We both like, you know, programming and the whole tech world. Um, and it just kind of organically evolved where, you know, she's a really amazing typeface designer, like when it comes to hand calligraphy, um, nice. vectors, logos, that kind of a thing. Um, I'm really good on more of like the programming aspect, so understanding more of the complex APIs. Um, and then we pair that together in like what we're passionate about doing, what we really want to like accomplish. And from there, it's like, it evolves over the course of time. And then this year we found that, you know, we've helped a lot of people build really cool stuff. Um, but then they struggle in that moment after, like, how do I, you know, take steps? How do I do the next thing? And so we've been working on ways to kind of like fill that need. And I think once you, you really look at you,
Uh oh. There All we right, go. Welcome back. I don't know what that was. Yeah, I turned off all my notifications and I still don't understand like what happened. Um, it's it's technology. You, you can't. It's just yeah. And so it, it's uh, so was I? So yeah, I was pretty much saying like you know it, it's one of those things where it came about organically, and when you look at where you can fill a need or solve a problem, it becomes a lot easier to build a business, um, and especially when you stick to what you're good at. Right. Like yeah. I know as I get older, I even though, you know, I've worked on great programming projects, you know, uh, usually leading out the technical team or being like the second to lead out that team, it kind of goes away as you get older, but the principles apply and you take those and you apply them to other areas. So you have to know what season of your mm -hmm. kind of like career and business that you're in. Um right. I have a tiny human. I know I'm not going to be able to stay up till like three, four in the morning programming. Um, but, you know, maybe it's best I delegate that to somebody who enjoys doing that and actually stay up till three in the morning working on something else like, you know, client strategy, knowing that that part is taken care of. Um, so learning to delegate uh, communication amongst all lines is the key. Um, what else? Man. There's just been so many things that you just kind of learn and looking back is like, wow, that, that was a thing, that too. <laughs> um, but I would say like the ones that jump out are definitely communication and like learning to delegate or prioritize. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, was, I want to run on that delegation thing because I think a lot of a lot of business owners struggle with this and even the business owners who know better and I'll use myself as an example, like I know to delegate and I have a team I can delegate and I still in the moment find myself going, let me just take care of it real quick. All right. Like I will, you know, I've caught myself. So for the past three weeks, I actually have um, an assistant who helps me handle and process all of my emails that come in. And I've caught myself going through for the past three weeks on Sunday evenings and responding to a bunch of the emails for her. Because, and I'm just like, why am I, so how did you, how did you figure out you needed to start delegating? And then how did you work with yourself? Because I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with this. Mm, so that's a good question, right? So I think, all right, so I learned this the hard way. Um, like the really hard way. And after landing myself in the hospital, I think like twice, I realized that if I wanted to reach the end goal, I would have to be alive to do it or like healthy enough to like get there. And so it was more a matter of like, okay, what is an actual priority, right? Um, am I just doing this to be busy or am I just doing this to, you know, actually be intentional move forward and do something that's helpful. And so it became a matter of um, really kind of like documenting the process a lot. Uh, looking and saying, you know, here's everything that goes into this thing. And all right, now that I know what goes into it, do I need to hire someone for it? So when we first started, one of the things that we got as a piece of advice that was really helpful was to write down all the roles that you'll have to wear hats for. And then you pick the one that you, you know, you can wear efficiently um, and delegate the ones that you know you can't. But for each one, make sure you do it at least, you know, three times so you know what the process is that you're trying to delegate to someone else. Um, and that became very, very helpful as time went on because if I ask the video editor, all right, I need you to edit this video, I need this thing, you know, have I had experience with it as a creative director? Um, yeah. So now I know, all right, I need a 30 second cut. I need, you yeah. know, the thing to pan up from here. I would like you to do, you know, a higher frame per second so we can get a slow motion and a high definition feel. I can be a lot more granular because I have some experience in, you know, what it is that I'm looking for. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to point out for our listeners on that one too, the other thing I see a lot of business owners do is they forget how much time it takes to do something. So you think, right? Like, right. Like that killed me. I had one a friend once who was super mad at his assistant because she was taking, you know, an hour to make 20 calls. 
And he was like, how, you know, that's ridiculous. It's way too long. She should be making those 20 calls in under 30 minutes. And he kept ranting. And finally I was like, you know what, dude, you go make the calls and see if you can get through 20 calls following your process with all the documentation you want done on each call in under 30 minutes. And when he tried, it actually took him an hour and a half, but in his head, he was like, I could be doing this in 30 minutes. So like it, I just wanted to point that out because I see people miss that one all the time. And you're right. It helps you get granular, but it also helps you understand how much time they spend on it. And I think that is something I think I pulled out of my programming day. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm coming up on what, like 17. So I'm in my 16th year of doing things, right? 16 plus years, whatever. Time is, so here's the point, right? Time, we perceive it differently. And what we think it takes to do something is way longer, usually. We're like, oh, I could write this email in 30 minutes. And then next thing you know, you realize like you're an hour and a half into this and the email still has gone out. Um, and it would be so much easier for you to be like, all right, here's what I want this email to cover. And someone that can compile that in like 15 minutes or less could do the email for you. Um, right. And this is where I realized yeah, I mean, so I know like when we do proposals for us, I'm not good at putting it into our, you know, formatted, branded thing that we have, right? Um, and I try to take the time to learn. And so I optimize that process to be like, all right, what are the things that I need to write information for? And then let me pass it over so it goes out. And then it gets dropped into hello sign. And then, you know, everyone can do it wherever they are. Um, and life goes on. But um it's really, really fascinating because like before this, I was doing, uh, you know, a client onboarding and we switched our process on that and we're having like, you know, time to sit down and go over things with them. And it occurred to me, it's like, why am I adding an extra step? But then I realized that I'm removing a huge obstacle, right? Because now if I look through my process and realize this is where I get a lot of hangups, now I can make time available to, you know, talk with them. I can understand the needs and problems. Um, I could pull keywords out of those conversations to actually use in my marketing because now I know on a more granular level when money is exchanging hands, what the true reason is. Um, so feedback or feedback loops within a business is very, very important, right? Um, I don't think a lot of business owners and brands take advantage of that because yeah. it's like, oh, I don't want to know I'm doing a good job because no one's complaining. But the reality is most of your clients will never complain or your customers won't complain on this. It's really, really horrible. Um, if it gets a job done, you know, it's kind of lukewarm, but you want them to be raving about you. You want them to like, like this interview, right? Um, not even a client. Uh, we literally had a chat and in the span of that chat, she's like, oh my goodness, I think you definitely need to meet Stephanie. And I'm like, who's Stephanie? And then like, <laughs> she sends me over your stuff and I'm like, re like watching the videos on YouTube and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is kind of really awesome. Um, I don't think I fit this. I'm not like that awesome. And then, you know, everything unfolds and I'm like, oh my goodness, like, thank you so much. And it all happened from like, you know, one interaction. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I've been like putting together is like a, a personal branding guide where it's about, you know, um, building a minimum lovable brand where you're not building to market it. You're building literally for core in a personal relationship. Um, you're trying to get to know your community. You're mapping things based on empathy. You're not using it to be manipulative. You're using it as a way to push further like initiatives of growth or you know innovation whether it's on a personal level or in your business right um and so that has been a beautiful journey and like seeing how people interact how you do things how you you know delegate how you perceive time um how much patience you have when it comes to your business uh yeah it's i think most entrepreneurs are lacking that one pretty badly <laughs> But it's so underrated, though. It like, is. <laughs> uh, and I mean, and so I think this is where people get confused. Like, patience doesn't mean to be lazy, right? It means if I'm working, it's like baking bread, right? If I'm ba making a meal and, you know, I need to make bread rolls, as that's part of the meal, then there are some steps that I can take to work to the next thing, right? 
also I have to make the yeast activate, all right, and then make the yeast rise. So, you know, that's like five to 10 minutes. Well, okay, well, I could go cut vegetables for, you know, casserole or something. And so that's applying like active patience, right? Um, and you're then able to go through your meal and not have to wait for things to block each other. So you're not waiting, oh, I have to do the bread first and then have to wait on all the elements of the bread. Because then you're, you put the yeast with the flour and all the other stuff that goes in there and you have to make that rise. And that's like another 30 to 40 minutes, right? Go and do something else, right? You're waiting on this thing or being patient for that thing to do its thing. Um, so programmers do this a lot. We call this agile, where we're working on multiple parts of like a development or a programming flow. Um, designers do it quite a bit too, and we're doing data gathering, prototyping, um, and then that's pretty big in user experience. But all those things, that's what business owners do every day, right? Yeah. Uh, we just have fancy titles for them, and we may go a little bit deeper into the tech side, but you're interfacing with your customers. You're, you know, understanding how you're onboarding them. You know where you're spending time. You know where you feel like you could use some help. Um, put the pride aside and just reach out. Be like, hey, I need help. Because if you calculate your hourly rate, right, um, does it make sense for you to be going and trying to assemble posters and design your own graphics and try to figure out how to build your own website? Or does it make more sense to focus on what you do best and take your vision to someone that can help you get it to the end goal? Um, so little things like that. It's always, I want to comment on two things there with the, that most recent one. People are always like, well, you know, Stephanie, it's a money thing, right? I can't. And I'm like, you know what? You can always start out. So you can always find some, like there. I'm a believer. There's always a solution, right? For every obstacle, I think there's a solution. You just have to find it. You know, you have to, and maybe you have to come at it three different ways, but there, you know, and you know what, maybe you can't afford the firm that branded Nike to do your graphics design right now. Like, okay, but nobody, you don't need the firm that branded Nike to do your graphics design right now. Like, that's where I think people get caught up and they, they think, oh, well, when I outsource it, it has to be 100%, you know, the best. It doesn't. You just need to, you know, someone spoke to me this way. They said, it's leveling up your business. You take the profits, you level up to where you can afford to level up again and level up again. You're, if you try and go for the top level right off the bat, it's never going to happen. Um, the other thing I wanted to comment on for our listeners was notice how, it, you know, not once did the word I was listening for it, waiting to see what was going to happen, but the word multitasking, when you're talking about dinner and the roles that never crossed your lips, it's not multitasking. It's one task and then the next and then the next and just staggering them so that they all complete at the right timing, but it's, you know, you go and you work on the veggies for those five minutes and you set a timer, you know, two seconds to say, okay, Google, set a timer for five minutes and then you can go back and then you've just one task at a time. Because I see too many people who are like, oh, I have to multitask and at the end of the day, they've done nothing. Yeah, I'm not a believer in multitasking. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people kind of view like, when I'm sitting and co-working with someone, they're like, oh, wow, like, how are you doing multiple things at once? Well, all right, if I'm waiting on a site to load, well, you know, depending on how long that site takes to load everything on the page, maybe I could just, you know, finish this email or, you know, take some notes or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, and you kind of have to find the bigger picture to what it is that you're trying to do and yeah. then see the puzzle pieces that fit with it. Because if you try to look at, and I think that the biggest thing is know often the weeds of your business and actually looking at the whole lawn, right? Uh, because everyone's probably seeing like an emergency, but if you say, you know, um, where does this end? What does this impact the rest of the timeline? Um, better. You can then look and say, okay, well, yeah, this is kind of important, but you know what? It's not you know, immediately important. Maybe what's more important is me replying to these emails so cash flow keeps going. Or maybe I you know, reply to this person to set up a new relationship to mature that over the course of time to see if we're a good fit to work together. Um, and so it's really knowing what stage, what season, what you know, part of that process you're in, and then responding accordingly. Um, firm believer in monotasking. 
like you kind of have to pick that thing and say this is what I'm going to work on um, get an accountability group right one of the things that we've been doing lately or more for me um, we have morning stand-ups where we'll pair with two or three other freelancers or business owners um, and say what are your goals for today right uh, what are your obstacles that you had from yesterday you know um, and we try to do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, um, but, you know, to kind of accommodate people as they go and whatnot. But it helps when you're writing things down, you're holding yourself accountable, uh, whether you're doing that publicly or privately, um, because as you build that chain together and you look and say, all right, every day I'm being intentional with working on my business or my goals. Um, or even my personal development, really and truly, that's where it all stems from, uh, then it becomes a whole lot easier. Because uh, actually, as a matter of fact, we're kind of chit-chatting about Damon John, um, and it just kind of popped into my head, where, you know, he states in his book um, that basically you should uh, not respond to emails for the first, like, hour that you wake up, right? Um, don't take on the world's problems when you first wake up right? Don't try to catch up with what everyone else is doing. Take some time, send to yourself, you know, meditate, read, fill your mind with something that's actually going to help you be centered and, you know, actually grounded for the day um, versus trying to solve everything. Like you'll have less anxiety, you'll be more focused, you'll see, you know, the picture better. Um, And just in doing that over the past, I would say like two or so weeks, it's been like really cool. So definitely recommend that. Well, you dropped, I mean, we're, you dropped so many nuggets here. I'm on three pages of notes. Like this is a new record. Um, so, but like you're just, it was, it was, and I will totally encourage our listeners, like go back, like every other sentence is a different lesson to apply in business. So definitely, but we are totally out of time. So what is your number one? You dropped so many, but what if you had to give, if you could only give a potential business owner or a current business owner one piece of advice? Let's go with the current business owner. What would you tell them? Um, I would say keep aiming always upward, right? This applies to the entrepreneurial and personal development side because as a business owner, your business is only as strong as you grow to be. So if you feel like you don't have time to read a book or listen to a podcast uh, or stay current or you know even listen to an interview like this, um, then your business isn't going to have the necessary tools to grow. So I would definitely say keep focusing always upward and keep creating good in the process. I'm just going to end it on that. Aim upwards, guys. You have a great future in front of you, but you're the only person who can make it happen. Go out there and make it a great week.